Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Morganti. Okay, you've taken some great images. You processed them in Lightroom and maybe you even shared a few of them with family and friends. Did you know that there's another way to share images from Lightroom? You could create a slideshow. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a slideshow, add music to it, and export it as a movie to share with your family and friends. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Okay, if you're like me, the images that you want to have in your slideshow are probably in several different folders. So the first thing you need to do is go to the library module of Lightroom, then create a collection and put all those different images in the single collection. Now I know I want this image that is in this folder in the slideshow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down towards the bottom of the left hand panel to the collections tab and I'm going to click the little plus sign and I'm going to create a collection and I'm going to give it a name primates. And I want to include the single selected photo and this is important. Click this checkbox set as target collection. That will help you put images into the collection much easier going forward. So I'm going to click create and it creates the collection it puts us in that collection now I know in the folder that this image was in there's at least two more images that I want to have in my slideshow so I want to go back to that folder now instead of going back up here and trying to search for the folder I was in all I need to do is right click right on the image and go to folder in library when I do that it will bring me right back to that folder now the image right next to it is an image that I want to have in my slideshow. I could go back to the collection down here and drag it into the collection, but a faster and easier way is because we made this a targeted collection, all I need to do is click this little circle that's in the right hand corner of the image. And when I do that, I'll go down to the collection. You can see right now the primates collection has one next to it. You can see that little plus sign. That means it's a targeted collection. If I click on this little circle, you can see it's two. So it automatically put that image in the collection. Well, there's an even faster way. This image I want to have in my slideshow. I could click on that little circle. A faster way is just hit the B key on my keyboard, B for boy. And when I do that, it automatically adds it to the targeted collection. So I could go through all these folders and just keep hitting the B key on an image I want to have in my collection. If I made a mistake and I put an image in that collection that shouldn't be in it, just hit the B key again and it will take it out of the collection. Or I could just click on that circle again and it will take it out of the collection. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all my various folders that have all the primate images I want to have in my slideshow. I'm going to do that uh, with this video paused so you don't have to sit back and enjoy me doing it. And I'll restart the video once I have my collection set. Okay, I'm back. I have all the images that I want to appear in my slideshow in the Primates collection. Now the next step is to put them in the order I want them to appear in my slideshow. And to, the, to that, all you need to do is to uh, click and drag. So for instance, I have three images in a row that are kind of close-up images of different primate faces. I want to break that up. Over here, I have two images that are of the same monkey, and I want to split those up. So I'm just going to click on this one and drag it over here and put it right there. So I could just keep clicking and dragging to get these in the order I want. So they really are now in the order I want. So we're ready to go over to the slideshow module. So we'll click on that. And when you click on the slideshow module, you'll see on the right hand side, you have a lot of different controls. And we're going to go through these uh, one by one. Now the very first one at the very top, zoom to fill frame. When you click that, any image that doesn't fill the full frame will zoom in to fill the frame. I don't want that because I have the images cropped exactly like I want them to appear. So I'm going to make sure that that is not checked. You could add a stroke border around the image. When you do that, you could see that in this case, it has a small white border. I could change the width of the border with the slider. 
and I could change the color or shade of the border by clicking on the little swatch right here. And I could just like pick a shade or go over here and pick a color. Now, in my case, I don't want anything to distract from the images of the primates. So I don't want any border at all. I specifically don't want a color border either. That would color would really distract. So I, I'm not going to use a border. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now cast shadow. I like to use this because I think it just adds a little depth to the slideshow. You could see on this image here, the lower right hand side of the image has a shadow being cast. So it adds a little depth and you have total control over that shadow. Uh, first of all, the opacity of the shadow, how dark do you want that shadow to be? Move it to the right, it's real dark. Move it to the left, it's less dark. The offset, how far away from the image do you want it to be cast with the offset? And I just want it more subtle. I don't want it to be crazy way off the image. The radius, this is kind of the edge blur. The more you move it to the right, the more of kind of an edge blur it has. And the more to the left you have, the more defined it is. So I want it to be blurred you know, like that. And then the angle, right now I have it going as though there was a light source in the top left-hand side shining down. So it's casting the shadow to the right. You could change that to any angle you want by moving the circle or moving the slider. You use whichever works best for you. And I want it to go kind of like I had it, which is a little more to the right. If I could get it. There we go. So like that, that's the way I want it. And maybe bring the opacity down just a little bit too. Again, I don't want anything to distract from my images of the primates. So I don't want the shadow to be so obnoxious that people are looking at the shadow and not at my images. Now show guides. These are the guides that are around the outside uh, here. You could show them or not show them. I like to show them. This won't show up in your final a slideshow. It's just here to help you get an idea of how your images are going to set. And you could change the size of those guides. And when you change the size of the guides, it will change the size of your images. Uh, for example, right now I have linked all on so that if I move all or one slider, all of the sliders will move equally. This is usually the way you'd want to do it. So if I move this to the right, you can see I make the guides bigger. I'm making my image way smaller. And if I move it to the left, you can see I can make my image a little bigger. So I'll leave it right around there. Uh, if you turn link all off, obviously if you move one slide, or one slider I should say, you're just going to move one of the guides. Again, that's probably not something you'd most often want to do. So I'm going to link all again, and then just going to make it just a little, not that big. It's kind of hard. You could come in and you could kind of dial in your number two that you want. Just click on one of the numbers and type it in if that is more convenient. Now the aspect ratio of your slideshow, by default it's going to show the screen. So it's the aspect ratio of my computer monitor. I'm happen, uh, this computer monitor that I'm working on happens to have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and that is perfect. Most often you're going to want to use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio because that will be for a television. So if you play your slideshow on a TV, it will show up properly. If you're working on a MacBook or some laptops, those may not be in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So what you could do is you could click this drop down and go to 16 by 9 and it will force it to that ratio. You may want to use the old NTSC standard of 4 by 3 and if you do that, it, you could see how it makes it more like the old television style. Now because my monitor is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I could leave it on screen. But I definitely suggest if you're not sure of the aspect ratio of the monitor you're doing this slideshow on, just put it on 16 by 9 and force it to 16 by 9 or that will force it to 16 by 9 and you could Rest assured that when you play it on a television, it will play properly and it won't have any borders or anything crazy like that. All right, now identity plates. There's actually three uh, on that you, we could use. The first one is really some text that you would put on every single slide of your slideshow. If I turn it on, you'll see that down here at the bottom, it says Photography by Anthony Morganti. This will be here for every slide. 
And I could move it. I could move it wherever I wanted. I could move it at the top. I could move it to the left. I could move it right on top of the image if I wanted to, right here. I could adjust the opacity with the slider. And I could adjust the scale. So I can make it a little smaller, a little larger. And you can see right now it's overlapping the image. I could click right here and I render behind image so that it will show up behind the image if I wanted to use this. I could bring it down. I could edit it totally by clicking on the actual square right here where it has photography by Anthony Morganti and going down to edit. This box pops up and I could edit it. I could write anything I want here. We're going to go more into detail of this box on a different identity plate that I'm actually going to use because I'm not going to use this. But you could see how I have Anthony Morganti in a very specific color, but it's showing up down here in gray. That's because I have override color clicked. If I turn that off, you can see the color shows up. If I have it clicked, it will override the color with whatever, whatever color or shade I have in this swatch. So I could do that if I want to. But as I mentioned, I don't want to use this identity plate. So I'm going to turn that off. I don't need my name on every single slide. Watermarking. I don't use watermarks, but if you click here, you can click this drop down. And if you have a watermark installed in Lightroom, it will show up here. You can see I don't use them. And then a watermark will appear on your images. You could again move it around, but that's not something I want to use. That's not something I do use. All right, rating stars. Uh, click on this, and in the top left-hand corner, you can see that it's showing this image is two out of five stars. If I click on the next one, that's five out of five, five out of five, and so on. It's again, I don't want to distract from my actual images, so I don't want stars to show up. But if you do, you could adjust the opacity of those star stars and the size of those stars as well. And I'm not going to use that. Also, I should add, you click on the little swatch and you could adjust the tone of the stars, the color of the stars, whatever you like. You have control, full control over those stars with that little box. By the way, I should add, if you're not seeing everything over here on the right hand side, like you're not seeing overlays, just right click near any of the ones that are being shown and this little like fly out menu appears and you can see how they all have check marks next to it if i remove that check mark you see overlays disappeared so if you're not seeing everything that i have on my computer just right click near one of these and then make sure there's a check mark there and then you'll see everything all right so that's stars next is text overlays if i click on that you'll see at the bottom it says bornean orangutan if i go on the next one it's showing Japanese macaque. If I go on this one, tufted capuchin. How are those showing up? How does it know what those types of monkeys are? Well, over in the library module, if I go to the metadata tab, like I go on this one that said Bornean orangutan, and I go to the metadata tab, and I go to the IPTC data, you can see under status, title, I actually typed in the type of monkey each of these were or ape each of these were i put in the actual name right there that was a lot of work for all the images and i did it for almost all of them not all of them um so if you do that and then in the slideshow module you activate text overlays and then you click right on the text overlay itself you'll be able to affect the opacity of the overlay with this slider the actual font you're using by clicking here and the actual attributes of that font. Do you want it regular, italic, bold, and so on? Also, you could have the lettering cast a shadow and the controls are exactly the same as the controls for the shadow we used when we cast the uh, shadow on the image. So again, we have opacity of that, the offset, the radius, the angle. And you could do that all right there uh, with that. So remember, to have the, all this active, though, you have to be clicked on the uh, lettering itself. If you don't click on the lettering, everything will be grayed out. And that's one thing that tripped me up, actually, when I first started using the slideshow module in Lightroom. Now, in this case, with all that said, 
I'm not going to use text overlays. Again, I don't want anything to distract from the slideshow uh, itself, the images themselves. Um, I just want the images to show and not have people have to read anything as it goes along. All right, now as we continue down, we have a color wash. This is actually the background, what's behind the image. If I turn it off, you'll see what I mean. Now it's all black. If I turn it back on, you can see that I have this kind of graduated gray. And it's going brighter in the left-hand corner and darker in the right-hand corner. And I did that on purpose because that's the way I have the shadow of the image cast. It's as though there was a light source in the top left-hand side, and it's casting the shadow down towards the lower right hand side so the lower right hand side is a little darker on the background and you could again click on the little swatch and you could change the shading the color of that background if you want a different color you could do all that there uh, with that um, you also could change the opacity as you move it to the left it actually gets darker it's kind of counterintuitive in my opinion move it to the right it gets a little lighter and the angle again of how you want the color wash to look it's it's actually a, a kind of a, a graduated color so we could move it so it goes the opposite way like this move it around and I want it pretty much like that so that is the color wash backdrop that is something I am going to use background image you could actually have an image behind the image and what you would do is you would activate this and then drag an image from your film strip up here I'm not going to do it but then there would be an image behind and you could change the opacity of that image with this slider as well. Um, that's not something that I've ever used. I really don't want, again, another image competing with my main image. That's just me. So I'm going to keep that off. So I'm not going to use that. And you actually then could just have a color for the background. Now we still have that kind of color wash look, but we could activate a color for it. And we click there, we could click on this drop down we could change the color to anything we want um, in this case again I don't want anything to distract I keep saying it but I don't want it to distract from the main image so I don't want any color there all right now here's two more identity plates and these are ones that I will use the first one is an intro screen identity plate if I click here you'll see we got this kind of gray background that would appear right at the beginning before the first um, in this case orangutan shows that will show up but I want to put my name in there I want to put a title in there so I'll click on the circle or the square I should say right here and go down to edit when I do that this box pops up you could use a graphical identi identity plate this is a PNG file that has transparency um, maybe your watermark in this case I have you could see right here I have uh, in the lower left hand side of this panel and the lower right hand side of this panel I have um, a kind of I guess a watermark it's just that I put there I could put those there if I wanted them there I don't want to you click locate file find the file whatever but I don't want that I want to put text there so I'll click on here and when you put text here this is a little difficult to work on so I'm going to give you a tip on how to do this um, first of all I'm going to primates, right? And then I want to put by Anthony. Oops. If I could spell my name correctly, I'd be better. There we go. Anthony Morganti. Now, I really want primates on its own line. So if I hit enter, it just puts that, the whole thing there. And I didn't want that, right? So what I need to do is I need to... Um, make this or edit it the way I want to. First of all, my intro screen, I think, yeah, I think that I could change the shade. I was thinking of making it darker, but let's go with what we have right now. Bring that up. I think we'll just leave it like that. All right. So what we're going to do, what I suggest you do is get a text editing program. Um, in this case, let's see, I'm going to click on this little magnifying glass and I'm going to use my text to edit program. All right. And I'm just going to get a new document. And I'm going to put here primates by, and I'm going to put it all on one line, Anthony Morganti. And then I'm going to select it all, and I want it centered. And I want the B and by to be lowercase, it corrected me. And I think just like that. So we're going to copy this, 
So I'm going to hit Command-C on my Mac. It's Control-C on a PC to copy that. And we'll get rid of that. Now we'll come back over here and we'll edit this. And make sure it's all selected and just hit Command-V to paste it. Now you can see it's on its own line. But I want primates to be larger. So I'm going to highlight primates. And I'm going to go down to this drop down and I'm going to make primates 48 pixels. So that's going to be much bigger. But you can see when I do that, I can't see by Anthony Morganti. This is why this is so difficult to edit. And you can't make this any taller to get at it. There's just no way. Uh, you can make it longer, but not taller, which is really ridiculous if you ask me. But anyway, I have it the way I want it by using the text edit program. And I'm going to click OK. It'll show it very quickly. And then it shows my first image. So that I like. So that is there. I could change the scale. I like the scale exactly as I did it. Um, I could override color. If I had primates, um, the word primate, if I go to edit, I could change this like the color of this if I wanted to by clicking here. And I could change, change a color if I wanted color. If that was the case, I'd make sure that override color is not checked. In this case, I'll leave it checked. Now, I'm going to do an ending screen as well. All right, we're going to click here. We're going to edit it. And again, I don't want to use a graphical identity plate. I want to use just text. And I'm going to just write photography by Anthony Morganti. So that's going to be at the very end. I'll just leave it as is. Now, when I click OK, it's going to give me a preview of it. That's fine. That will be right at the end. So those are two identity plates that I will be using. Again, same thing with that. I could override the color. I could change the color of, that I override it with. I could change the color like my name if I wanted to, whatever, the scale, and so on. So I like what I did there. All right, now music. Uh, I do want music to play during my slideshow. I have on my desktop a file, so I'm going to click plus here, and I'm going to add this file. I think it's music that is fitting for the subject matter, and I'm going to click choose. And you can see that it put it there. It's 2 minutes and 34 seconds long. I could put more than one song. They'll play back to back. I could hit the plus sign. When I do another uh, slideshow down the road uh, someday, these songs will show up here. Maybe I don't want to use them anymore. If that's the case, hit minus. I want to use different songs. So you could just get rid of them. They won't show up in the slideshow module. So I click plus. I want this to play. All right, now we get to the nitty gritty. How do we want these images to appear? Uh, right now I have it set to a slide length of 5 seconds with a crossfade of 1.3 seconds. So one slide will fade in, the other one will fade out, and so on. So I'll leave it at that for now. I'll show you some of the other uh, controls in a second. You'll see over here there's a manual tab. Most often you'll find when you click on that, it will tell you that Manual mode does not support these settings. So there's some setting I did up above that won't allow me to use manual mode. So just stay with automatic. Um, I've never used manual mode. I've never been in a situation where I was able to use manual mode. I found automatic worked fine. So I'm just going to stay with automatic mode uh, here. So I'm just going to go through and just make sure that when I did manual mode that it didn't turn off anything that I don't want turned off, because sometimes it does. So, all right, slide length, five seconds, crossfade, 1.3 1, 1. seconds. Audio balance, uh, do you want the um, music to more dominate or the video to more dominate? Um, just move it towards the left uh, so that the video, this is what I want, I want the video to be more prominent than the music, so we're just gonna leave that. Now, pan and zoom, uh, if this wasn't checked, each image would just show up statically and it would fade out and the other one would fade in. With pan and zoom, it gives you what is commonly called the Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns, of course, is the director who did, you know, the Civil War and a lot of different PBS specials. And he would show images and the images as he showed them would either zoom in slowly or zoom out or they'd pan left, right, or they'd do a zoom and pan at the same time. If you click this box, it will do that automatically and it will vary it from image to image. Now I 
want it more towards the low side uh, because I don't want it to do a severe zoom or severe pan. I just want it to be very subtle. And again, I don't want anything to take away from the actual images. So I'll try it right here with low, you know, the slider more towards low. Now, when the slideshow finishes, do you want it to be repeated? And I'll just say, yeah. Do you want the images to show in random order? Well, I don't want that. I just went through all the trouble ordering them. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. Now, the quality of our preview here. Do we want it standard, draft, or high? Of course, draft will render much faster. High is going to take a lot longer. We'll do the compromise in the middle standard. All right. Now, there's two different ways you could preview this. If you click, click, click the preview button, the preview will show in the middle and it will leave Lightroom open and you'll see it right in the middle. If I click play, it will minimize Lightroom and play the preview all by itself. Now I'll show you both. I'm going to start out with preview. Let's see what this looks like with a slide length of five seconds and a crossfade of 1.3 seconds. So I'll click preview. It's going to take a while to render. Depending on the speed of your computer, this could take quite a while. On my computer, which actually is very, very fast, it takes probably a minute or two. And after actually it renders once, it will tend to render the other ones a little bit faster. Not a lot, but a little bit. So what I'll do is, again, I'll pause the video. And when it's about ready to play, I'll restart the video and you could see it play. Okay, it should be just about ready to play. And there it goes, it's playing. Not sure if you could hear the music in the background, but the music is playing. I'll turn it up a little bit. Now I did encounter a bug uh, with the latest version of Lightroom when you use the slideshow module. Sometimes, it hasn't done it yet, but on some of the image it will show a black border around it. What I found is that only appears in the preview modes. If once we save this slideshow and it becomes an actual movie, it does not have the black border. Now it hasn't done it at all now. So it's an intermittent bug that appears sometimes. So if you're seeing a black border around the image and you know that you didn't have any borders activated, don't worry about it if you're in preview mode or play mode over here on the right. Uh, that won't show up in the final video. All right, I'm not going to play the whole thing uh, right now. So I like the music. I like the, you know, the slide length, five seconds with a 1.3 second fade. I kind of like that. I think it's working out pretty well that way. But I am going to hit escape to stop it. All right. And let's just sh show some or talk about some of these other settings. Sync slides to music. So this music is two minutes and 34 seconds long. And in this, I only have 26 images plus the starting slide and the ending slide. So that's 28 altogether. So with a five seconds between each of them, it pretty much fits this music almost perfectly. Uh, if I want to sync it to the music, meaning my music was like four minutes long, what I could do is just click this little box here and it will, um, oh, I'm sorry. I want to fit to the music, click here, apologize. And you can see how it will adjust the slide length and the crossfades so that it will fit exactly to the music. So the music will begin and end right naturally as the slideshow begins and ends. Um, but another thing you could do is sync the slides to the music. And you noticed when I did that by accident a moment ago, it grays everything out. So what it does, it actually tries to listen to the music and get kind of the timing of the beats. And it will attempt to um, play each slide the proper length of time on a beat so it will move I think maybe more naturally this doesn't always work but it's worth a try so what I'm going to do now is we're going to preview it again but this time I'll click the play instead so you could see what that looks like but one thing I want to caution you you see I'm going to click on this slide if I click preview or play right now it will start from this point we want it to start from the beginning so I'm going to make sure I click on this first image then I click play over here on the right. And again, it's going to take a little time to render, so I'll pause the video. And once, right before it's ready to render, I'll come back on. Okay, it should be just about ready to play. Okay, there it goes. You can see how it 
got rid of Lightroom and it's playing full screen. You see that little black border was on that first one? And that one? That's a bug in Lightroom. Don't worry, that will not show up in the final image. I can tell you right now, though, I don't like this. It's going much too fast. So that's why I said it's. you could try that sync to music and see if it works. Most often, I think you'll find it's not something you'll want to use. You want to do it manually. And again, let's see if another one shows with black borders. That black border on some of them, don't worry, it won't show up in the final product. Now you can see how fast that was. It's starting over because I had repeat on. Let's see if black borders show again. There, that black border, it shouldn't be there. All right, I hit escape key, we got out of that. So we're going to stop doing the sync uh, slides to music. I'm going to go back to my five seconds with a one second or 1.3 second crossfade. And I like the way it was, um, you know, with my audio balance set more towards video. The pan and zoom, I like the way I did it. Um, let's see, repeat slideshow, we'll leave that activated, excuse me. I'm going to hit play again. Now let's just see the settings full screen like this. I'll click play. Again, I got to make sure I go back to that original first image. So it will start there and I'll click play. Again, it's going to render, but it should render a little faster this time. Let's see. It's going pretty quick now. Let's see. I'll leave. I won't pause the video this time so you could get an idea. Um, the first time I did this, it took uh, about a minute and a half to render. Now this time it's it's much further along than it was a, uh, when I did it the first time. And it's on slide 27 and there's only 28 slides so it should be about ready to play. And there it goes. All right I'll turn up the music a little bit. Again that black border won't appear. Okay, I'm going to hit the escape key. Um, all right, I'm really happy with everything now. So I think we want to save it as a, a video file. And then I could share this file, um, you know, online or, you know, play it on a different device or whatever I want to do. So I like all the settings I did. I'm happy, ready to rock and roll. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here on the left. And you can see there's two choices. Export as PDF. You could do that. It will just export all the images that are in the slideshow as individual PDFs. So it'll be one PDF file with like 28 images in it. It'll be the opening slide, all the images, then the closing slide. Um, of course, the music won't be there. It's a PDF. So if you need ever in your travels, someone asks you to take, they want to see some of your images and they want to see them as a PDF, you could do that in the slideshow. You put them all in the slideshow, a module, and then go to export as PDF, and you'll be able to do that and share them that way. Of course, that's not often done. We're going to export a video. So I'm going to click here. And when I do, after that uh, spinning wheel of death hopefully goes away, there it goes, uh, we give it a name. And I'm going to give this, I'm going to call it primates because I'm not imaginative. And we're going to save it to my desktop. And what what format? I'm going to use 1080p, which is the best available. You can see there's three other lesser formats available. Well, less quality, I should say. And uh, less resolution, technically. And we'll save it. I'm going to click Export. And when I do that, you'll see in the upper left-hand side, eventually, that a progress bar will show. And it's starting to, there it goes export the slideshow as a video. So again, I'm going to pause this video so you don't have to watch this uh, progress bar move painfully slow. And once it's done, we'll return and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, it just finished exporting my movie. I'm going to minimize Lightroom. I saved it to my desktop. Let me get rid of my text edit that I did there. And it's right here. Remember, I called it primates. And let's take a look at it. We'll maximize this, we'll that, and I'll hit the play, and we'll watch my slideshow.
Okay, that's it. I hope that helps you create great slideshows to share with your family and friends. Do me a favor, follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. And if you want to find all my free photography training, go to my website, imrphotographer.com. From there, you could find everything that I do. Thank you for watching.